Hey y'all, welcome back to Mulberry Ranch Farm. And today we're gonna be dealing with urine scald. Ugh. And I know what you guys might be thinking. What do you mean urine scald? Well, if you've been with us here for any amount of time, more recently, you know that we breed Nigerian dwarf goats here on our farm. And that the fall time means that it is breeding time. So we've had a lot of pairings between our bucks and our does. And sometimes when they get together, the bucks get really, really excited to be around the does. And they really wanna put their best foot forward. And they do that by urinating on themselves, on their legs, on their bellies, and on their faces. It's gross. Goats really are no different from most other mammals. There's a lot of ammonia in urine. And when they tend to spray on themselves like that, sometimes it can actually burn their skin. It can cause their hair to fall off. And in the worst case scenarios, they get infections. And today I noticed that Flu has some urine scald. So I get to do a little cleanup on Aisle five for urine scald for our main herd sire, Flu. We're gonna separate him, get him up into the tack room, up onto one of our goat stands, and I'm going to show you how to take care of urine scald in your goats. It's gonna be kind of gross. <laughs> so some of the things that you're going to need if you find that your breeding buck has urine scald is I like to bring them aside, put them in a nice controlled environment where they can't really run or get away from me, which is what we've got our goat stand here for. So I'm gonna put Flu up here and I've got a nice bucket of warm water. I've got either betadine, which you guys can see right here. I have chlorhexidine. Both of these are antimicrobial, antiseptic skin cleansers that are safe to use on your goats, along with new stock. I will probably use the betadine or the chlorhexidine to actually wash all of the gunk and nastiness off of flu. <laughs> I will pat the area dry and then I will apply a lot of new stock. But really next year, I need to be on my game to help to prevent this from happening to my herd sire. Sweeten the deal here for him. Let him have some food when he gets in here to get him to put his head through the head stall. He's likely not to be happy with me because I'll be taking him out of the stall where his lady love is, but she's gonna be picked up tonight. Those of you that were with us in the last episode know that this little lady in here is Toupe and she's from a visiting farm to receive some of the services that Flu is very eager to give. All right, Flu, let's get you out of there. Come here, buddy. Come on, buddy boy. Come on, buddy boy. No Toupe, no Toupe. Oh boy. And Rosie is in heat. And I, he's already bred Rosie today, but this is part of the reason right here that these bucks get urine scald. So he's talking the love language here to Rosie, but to really make himself attractive, he will urinate on his face and on his legs. So hopefully once all of our does are bred, he won't be um, applying his cologne much longer. All right, buddy, I know you think this means you're gonna get to period, but it's not, come on. Come on, come on, buddy. Come on, nice and easy for the peoples. Come on. So we've got him, not very happily, into our head stall. And you guys can see, this is the area that I'm most worried about, but you can tell his face has some stuff going on too. He's really black here, but usually his face is this color. So that just goes to show you how much scald he's got going on. I might even shave some of the stuff off of his face. But I'm gonna wash both his face and his legs and apply some new stock and hopefully we'll get this cleared up really fast. So I've got my bucket of betadine mix with warm water. I've got what I'm going to be washing him off with. And I've also got a nice clean dry, dry towel to pat him down. So I'm gonna go ahead and get to this really, really dirty part of just washing him up. He's probably not gonna like it, but it's for his own good. And it's one of the last few warmer days. I hate doing this too when it's cold, but I guess that's just what has to happen. I'm just gonna kind of wash him off here. And you guys can tell, look how dirty. He's so dirty. 
shoulder. So this is just removing a lot of the urine off of his legs and uh, pretty much just removing what's causing him all this discomfort. He's got a lot of achiness like on his shaft area. And they're not gonna, this is why I like to have them in the head stall too, because like outside, I would not be able to keep him still. I would be able to manipulate him like this. It's just a good practice to have a really nice, good and sturdy goat sand where you can perform maintenance like this. But if you have a really good friend or a, a very understanding spouse, all my crazy goat ladies out there that is willing to help you by holding animals for you to perform necessary maintenance or to treat anything like this, then power to you, get you a friend, have them help you hold. Oh my goodness, look at all the black come off. You're actually beautiful under there. You're actually beautiful under there. Come here, buddy. I know, it's kind of cold and icky, but that's why we're using warm water. You just don't want to leave any open wounds like this because ultimately, that's what urine skull turns into is an open wound where you're allowing urine and all kinds of like the other really icky things to sit on that skin and you're creating a breeding ground for infection. And especially around this time of year when these boys are working super hard to give me the best babies they can put on the ground, I need to make sure that they're healthy and happy. And I wouldn't be happy trying to run a marathon like these guys sometimes do if I had open sores all over my legs and stuff. I know, you're so good. You're such a good boy. Okay. So I think we've done a pretty good job um, cleaning him. So now I think it's time that we go ahead, dry off these areas that we're going to be applying medicine. It's important to dry them off well too, mostly because if there's uh, moisture like water or soap, sometimes it helps to lift medicine off and then it, it's removed much quicker than you would like it to be. So it's important, especially in colder weather, if that's when this happens, to try to get as much moisture or water off the areas that you know you're going to be treating so that the medicine stays on longer and does the job it's actually supposed to be doing for your animal. Can you guys look? That's how dirty. And that's with, this is after cleaning. So you can tell like there's just a lot on there, even like with, the antimicrobial and antiseptic skin cleansers that we're using. But that just goes to show like how dirty these guys get during rut. And that's all, this is all the opportunity of infection that's just kind of chilling out on his skin, on his fur. He's a good boy. You need to like this. And I'm really sorry. So, he actually does have one bad spot over here and I'm just gonna show you like how you can kind of tell. You guys can see like he's got some really bad urine scald right there where he's actually lost the hair. So this is his, le this leg is a little worse because he favors this side to perfume. You can look over here, he doesn't have that on this side but he is, he's missing hair right here. So dude, seriously? So now I'm actually just going to apply new stock right here and he's pretty dry now but new stock tends to smell really bad but it's it does wonder for skin and encouraging the hair growth to come back in i'm just gonna go ahead and get a nice big dollop just kind of smear it on there and if this is really bad if there was like a lot of scald underneath his hair i 100 percent would just shave him if that's something you're dealing with and you feel like you can't get to the infection that is on your buck because i'm just kind of like working this into the skin wherever he might try to urinate on himself so just applying some over here too i know some people if you don't have new stock on hand and you've got a cvs some people use desitin like the um the diaper rash stuff because urine scald very much kind of is um, similar to that in your goats. This is just something to help to coat his legs for medicinal purposes to help him heal up and be as effective of a herd sire as he possibly can be. Good boy. 
So in a nutshell. <laughs> Are you having fun being, being a, a little stinker back there? Trying to bounce that up. So I'm gonna go ahead and take Flu back to our buck pen. Hopefully soon, with breeding season coming to an end very soon, he'll stop urinating on himself and creating this urine skull. But that's how you treat urine skull in goats. And hopefully this guy is all the better for it. And you guys can already tell, like his face looks a lot lighter after being cleaned, even though he doesn't want to be still for it. Guy, hey, 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 hey. So, so now that we're done, Treating urine scald on flu, which he's, see, he's going right back to applying it. He's back to his log where he can look lovingly on to the rest of our Nigerian dwarf food. So guys, that's how you treat urine scald in your goat. Uh, it's really important during breeding season with these bucks that you kind of keep a really close eye on them because urine scald, especially depending on how ruddy your buck is and how often he's applying his own self-made cologne, urine scald can happen really quickly and it can be really bad for these guys. It can impede the way that they breed. It's an open wound inviting infection in on your breeding buck. And nobody wants that because it's a lot easier to treat it now than it to turn into an infection that might require a vet visit, penicillin, all kinds of different things. So we're trying to nip that in the butt. But I thank you guys for being here with us on Mulberry Branch Farm. Stay tuned for a breeding series coming up on seven signs to tell how your doe is in heat and how you know when it's safe to breed a first time freshener. But until next time guys, thank you so much for being here with me. I hope that you learned a little something. I'd love to bring you along so that you can grow along with me. But in the meantime guys, we hope that you're all staying safe out there, being kind to one another, and we're going to catch you all in the next one. Bye y'all and God bless.